Now that you've been introduced to GIMP and Affinity Photo, let's get into the nitty gritty of how these two programs compare, starting with their core photo editing features. If you're used to premium software, opening GIMP for the first time might be slightly confusing. There's no welcome screen that directs you where to go or what to do. However, once you figure out, all you need to do is go to File New or File Open. Everything else about GIMP should seem familiar to anyone who's ever used image editing software. GIMP operates in a single workspace with an image window in the center and tools, menus, and dockable dialogue surrounding it. If GIMP has proven anything, it's that there are a base set of features that people expect in a solid photo editor. For any editor to be taken seriously, it should have transform tools, paint tools, text and shape tools, smart selection tools, a layer system with masking and blending abilities, various practical filters and effects that can be added to images or layers, and robust importing and exporting capabilities that support a wide variety of file formats. It should also have a customizable user interface that can be tweaked based on the user's preferences and the ability to import custom or third-party patterns brushes, fonts, and palettes. GIMP has all these features, which means it sets the bar pretty high for premium software. If Affinity Photo has proven anything, it's that the premium features of a program start with the automation of advanced photo editing techniques, as well as having a comprehensive suite of non-destructive editing features, all in a turnkey solution that doesn't require any additional software. This is where GIMP starts to lose pace with Affinity Photo and where Affinity Photo shows it's worth the money. For example, Affinity Photo supports built-in panoramic stitching, focus stacking, batch image editing, raw processing, macro recording, which is the equivalent to Photoshop Actions, and an HDR merge feature. It also has non-destructive editing features made popular by Photoshop like adjustment layers, effects layers, and vector shape tools. Finally, it offers a panel with quick access to free stock photo sites like Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay, much like how Adobe offers quick access to Adobe Stock from within Photoshop. Affinity Photo also uses a dynamic persona system, personas being the term Affinity uses for workspaces, that show or hide certain tools and toolbar shortcuts depending on the persona you're in. There are five main personas in total with each one serving a specific purpose, though the photo persona is likely where you'll spend most of your time when inside the program. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to personas on my other channel, Pro Photo Vector, if you wanna learn more about that subject. But the photo persona is the main workspace where you edit, manipulate, or retouch your photos, as well as add text, shapes, and effects to your images or objects. This persona is most similar to what you'd find in the GIMP user interface. Affinity Photo has some additional characteristics that are unique to this program, like the live previewing of effects and pixels inside your brush head. It has a virtual assistant that pops up every now and then when the program has automatically performed an action for you, such as creating a pixel layer when you're trying to paint on a new document that doesn't have any layers. Finally, Affinity Photo provides a live preview thumbnail of image adjustment presets inside the adjustments panel so you can easily see how the adjustments will affect your image prior to applying those adjustments. When you open Affinity Photo for the first time, you're greeted with a welcome screen, not unlike the one you'd find in Photoshop that contains quick links to useful resources like tutorials, premium assets, and project samples. You can also create a new document using your own settings for any of the dozens of pre-installed templates. And I should note that GIMP also has built-in templates as well as tons of tutorials and assets for users to reference, but Affinity neatly integrates these resources into a welcome screen, which improves the overall ease of use of the program. So this leads me to my next point. GIMP can usually reproduce most of the premium features and effects found in Affinity Photo, but it often requires the use of third-party plugins or the installation of additional open source software. For example, the BIMP plugin allows for batch image editing directly within GIMP, while Darktable, an open source raw process, allows for raw image editing and performing HDR merges for exposure bracketed images. The free third-party Hugin software can stitch panoramic photos. Inkscape can be used for vector shape drawing. And the gimmick plugin has tons of additional features and effects that can further expand GIMP's capabilities.